Okay, Dan, there are two ideas I want to give uh, our brothers and sisters in the SME business. Just food for thought. Uh, the first one is on dead assets. Okay. So I, I know most of you are looking at me as, okay, what's a dead asset? It's an asset which is not generating income for you. And how do you measure it? The minimum you should always accept, and is accepted in finance, is treasury bills. Treasury bills is the minimum any asset should give you. Because you are lending money to government, and they pay you right now is around 6 to 7%. Any asset then that gives you anything below 6% is a dead asset for you. Because you would have invested that money in treasury bills and you would have gotten 7% trouble free. Because government is constitutionally guaranteed to pay you. Now, so I want you to make a list of all your dead assets. And that now becomes inefficient capital. And if you aggregate it for the whole economy, how many inefficient assets do we have as Kenyans collectively? And let me give you examples of these dead assets that most of you have, which can free, if you sell them, they can free and give you capital to then multiply your business. How many of you have a house in the village? And you are paying rent here in Nairobi? Okay, I can see a few, uh -huh. You see, many dead assets. How much did you invest? Two, three million. If you had put three million in treasury bills, it would have given you how much? 210,000 every year. But that house in the village, who are you keeping there? A house boy. When, uh, when it's leaking, the house boy calls you and say, uh, two more pesa. So who is the boss? The person is living in your house in the village. You are hoping to go and live there when you have retired. Okay? So the guy lives in your house for 20 years, taking care of it, and says, to my person. The houseboy is the boss. Now, there are so many dead assets in our country. If we just free that capital, you can imagine the, un the, the, the savings we will unleash to expand our businesses. So that is one. So do asset rationalization and say, how am I freeing my assets and how am I using them? Most of you, for example, have plots all over the place. Most of these plots are dead assets. They, they, you are hoping that one day a thicker road will pass there and then you get a capital gain. But uh, there are no thicker roads that will pass all over the place. The second idea I wanted to bring out, and this is now for people like him in government, I was there once, is the value of aggregators. You see, <laughs> there's once I read a book uh, called The Mystery of Capital by a fellow called Hernando Soto. He's a former governor of Central Bank in Peru, and he used to work for World Bank. And he said the difference between third world countries and developed countries is the way they mobilize capital. That's all. The way capital is mobilized in that economy. Now, we are very inefficient mobilizers of capital. And I'll give you an example, uh, which is an industry in Kenya, which is a very efficient mobilizer of capital. And that's the tea industry. I want you to study how the tea industry works for you to understand that actually, if all our industries were working like the tea industry, Kenya would be very far. And that is KTDA. If you just understand how KTDA works, and if all industries work like KTDA, we would work magic in our economy, the value of an aggregator. Look at the tea. The average tea farm, a small holder, has only half an acre. Just half an acre. That's the average. But that half an acre of tea is the best quality tea in the world. So my job as a farmer in Muranga or Kericho is just to deliver my tea into a buying center. And that's it.
KTDA comes to pick that processes through your own factory. Remember, the factories are owned by the farmers. And then they aggregate and market them to Pakistan, to Egypt, to UK. It's distributed all over the world as aggregate. So we have an aggregator that then delivers that. So one problem that we did in our country is we killed aggregators. And that is why I'm arguing for a ministry of small business to then protect aggregators, create them and protect and classify them in various industries. So most of you are in industries which are very disorganized. So there is no support mechanism for you to scale to global stage but still remain as an SME in Nairobi. That is where the problem is. I would like, for example, the county government of Nairobi to influence the formation of aggregators. A market center is an aggregation, bringing people doing similar things together so that when the customer comes, it's a one-stop shop. So the value of aggregation, if we get aggregation right as an economy, as a country, we will have put in place a very strong foundation for then SMEs like you to take off. Thank you, Dan.